We have a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right in. Today we are finally taking a look at the lovely King Henry VIII. He was wild to say the least. So let's look at his early life, his many wives, and the religious changes enacted during his time. Henry was born on June 28, 1491 in Greenwich, England. His parents were King Henry VII, first of the Tudor line of monarchs, and Elizabeth of York. Only three out of the six or seven children that these two had together survived infancy. There was Arthur, Henry, and their sister, Mary. In 1493, at the age of only two years old, Henry was made constable of Dover Castle. Shortly after, he became Earl Marshal of England and Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, when he was only three years old. He then became Knight of the Bath, Duke of York, and Warden of the Scottish Marshes. His father really didn't want to share these positions with people outside of the family, so Henry ended up with the longest list of titles by the time he was only four years old. Given his status, Henry was given the best education possible. Since there was no expectation that he would have to take on the throne, his education was more focused on theology, music, poetry, and sports. He even became fluent in Latin and French. Henry's older brother Arthur was actually in line for the throne and had been betrothed to Catherine of Aragon since the ripe age of only two years old. These two were married in November of 1501, but their marriage was a short one as Arthur died of illness only about five months after the marriage. Keep in mind, they were both teenagers at this point. After the unfortunate passing of Arthur, Henry was now next in line for the throne. He ended up being betrothed to Arthur's widow, Catherine of Aragon, on June 25th, 1503, although they would not live together as was custom at the time, considering he was in fact only 11 on the day of their betrothal. He actually ended up initially rejecting their marriage at the age of 14. His father, King Henry VII, died on April 21st, 1509, making the now 17-year-old King Henry VIII. To the surprise of many, Henry then decided to go through with the marriage to Catherine after all, and they were wed on June 11, 1509. The two were then coronated on June 23, 1509, and he started his reign in a spectacular manner by arresting two ministers accused of high treason only two days after his coronation. These two were executed in 1510, and this style of ruling and ridding himself of his enemies would become a trademark of King Henry VIII. His pension for strained marriages and mistresses also began very early on. Between 1510 and 1515, Catherine gave birth to a stillborn girl, two stillborn sons, and a son who lived only seven weeks. Finally, in February 1516, a healthy girl by the name of Mary was born. Also in 1516, Henry started his affair with one of the possible many mistresses, with this affair being perhaps the most significant. This mistress, Elizabeth Blount, ended up giving birth to a son, Henry Fitzroy, in June of 1519. Henry Fitzroy was made Duke of Richmond, and it was believed he would one day be legitimized so that he could rise to the throne as Henry's heir, as this was his only living son at this point. This actually never happened, though, as Henry Fitzroy ended up dying in 1536. Meanwhile, back in 1518, Catherine had given birth to yet another stillborn girl. This is likely why Henry VIII was more inclined to legitimize Henry Fitzroy so that his line could still continue. Henry VIII starts getting a bit wild after this point. He finally became frustrated with his marriage due to lack of male heirs and his now growing infatuation with a woman of Catherine's court, Anne Boleyn. This led Henry to seek an annulment of his marriage from the church so that he could go on and marry Anne. The Pope of the Roman Catholic Church denied this annulment which led to Henry divorcing her anyway and establishing the Church of England, thus bringing on the English Reformation. Henry then went on to marriage number two and was wed to Anne Boleyn on January 25, 1533. His marriage to Catherine was officially made null and void on May 23, 1533, 
with his marriage to Anne ruled officially valid on May 28, 1533. Anne was crowned queen on June 1, 1533, and then gave birth to their daughter Elizabeth on September 7, 1533. His daughter from Catherine, Mary, was then ruled illegitimate to take her out of the line of secession. During his marriage to Anne, she was also unable to produce a male heir for him. Henry did what he did best and found a way to get out of this marriage as well. He ended up accusing Anne Boleyn of adultery and treason, likely all lies, and had the marriage annulled just two days before she was beheaded for her crimes on May 19, 1536. Henry didn't let this keep him down, though, and he moved on to wed his third wife, Jane Seymour, only 11 days after Anne's beheading, on May 30th, 1536. Jane had actually been on the courts of both Catherine and Anne. Fancy that. In October 1537, Henry finally got the male heir he always wanted, Edward VI. Only nine days after giving birth, though, Jane ended up dying. Henry actually considered Jane his only true wife due to her bearing his male heir and thus had her buried alongside him. He even ended up staying a single man for about two years until he married Anne of Cleves on January 6, 1540. This fourth marriage was done in an attempt to form an alliance, but good old Henry thought that she was ugly and therefore had yet another marriage annulled after only six months of marriage. Luckily, this Anne was not beheaded and instead lived out her days in a nice castle as the king's sister. There was no wait between this wife and the next, as Henry moved on immediately and married Catherine Howard in July of 1540. By this point, Henry had become obese, so he sought out a young, beautiful woman, and he found that in 19-year-old Catherine. Henry actually loved his new wife and showered her with gifts and affection, but this wouldn't last. Rumors of her promiscuity and possible infidelity led to her being executed for adultery and treason on February 13, 1542, at the very place Anne Boleyn had met her fate for the same alleged crimes, the Tower of London. His sixth and final wife was Catherine Parr. The two were wed in July of 1543. Catherine was both kind and educated and is said to have brought peace and stability to the court while being a great stepmom to Henry's kids. She even convinced old Henry to restore both Mary and Elizabeth to the line of secession. Catherine Parr actually ended up outliving King Henry VIII. King Henry VIII died on January 28, 1547, at 55 years old, after his long declining health had finally overtaken him. The line of secession was rocky, and Henry had given no instructions as for what was to come. His son, Edward VI, ended up taking the throne at only 10 years old, with Catherine Parr serving as regent until her death one year after her husband. Edward died only six years later and left their cousin, Lady Jane Grey, as a successor because of her religious beliefs as he didn't want Mary, a Roman Catholic, to take the throne. Lady Grey's reign, however, only lasted nine days as Mary proved to be more popular. Henry VIII's first daughter, Mary, then became queen and ruled until her death in 1558, with his second daughter, Elizabeth, ruling as Queen Elizabeth I until her death in 1603. England would actually be quite confused over the next chunk of time after Henry's death, as Mary spent her five-year reign attempting to turn England Catholic again, only for Elizabeth to then take the throne and double down on the reforms Henry had enacted. With his many wives, his death, and his succession out of the way, let's touch on the English Reformation that he caused. As I mentioned earlier, Henry split from the Roman Catholic Church and created the Church of England in order to divorce his first wife, Catherine. He quickly enacted many changes in England in order to solidify legitimacy of his new church and crush any opposition that would arise. He enacted the Act of Secession in 1533, which is how he ended up making his first daughter, Mary, illegitimate and therefore unable to secede him when the time came. He enacted the Acts of Supremacy in 1534, which recognized King Henry as the head and only head of the Church of England. In 1532 came the Act in Restraint of Appeals, which abolished the right to appeal to Rome, whether in matters religious or not. The Acts of Supremacy and the Act in Restraint of Appeals are actually what got him excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church. 
although he didn't really care. Also in 1534 was the Treasons Act of 1534 that made it treason and therefore punishable by death to ignore the aforementioned Act of Supremacy. In 1535, he enacted the Suppression of Religious Houses Act, which basically allowed him to confiscate lesser religious houses whose value was not greater than 200 pounds per year. This ended up adding to his wealth considerably. All of these acts of suppression of religious freedom weighed heavy on the people of England. One of the more notable instances of the people boiling over was on October 13th, 1536, on which the Pilgrimage of Grace began. This was an uprising in which 20,000 to 40,000 rebels were led by Robert Ask. Henry promised to pardon the rebels if they would disperse, but this was a lie. A total of 216 activists, including all of the leaders, ended up being executed to kill the rebellion. Another blow to Catholicism in England came in 1539 with the Act of Parliament, which ended up closing all Catholic monasteries, regardless of size or income. By the end of it, around 800 monasteries had been closed, thus rocking all of England as communities relied on these monasteries not only in spiritual matters, but for the good of their communities in general. The Reformation would continue with his son, Edward VI. There was a brief revert back to Catholicism during Mary's five-year reign in which she gained the moniker Bloody Mary for her persecution of Protestants, which included burning some 287 martyrs at the stake. As I mentioned earlier, the policies enacted by King Henry during his reign were then reinstated when Queen Elizabeth I took the throne and the Reformation continued on. So there we have it, a bit about King Henry VIII and his many marriages, as well as the beginning of the new Church of England and subsequent English Reformation. Despite not being educated as a monarch considering his brother Arthur was supposed to take the throne, he sure became known as what the true image of monarchy looks like. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.